Hi there. So I recently watched Mrs. Chatterjee vs. Norway and it's one of those movies which sort of leaves a lasting impression on you. And I wanted to talk about it because it's not just a movie about a woman fighting to get her children back. It's not just about motherhood and all of this. It's about toxic relationships. It's about dysfunctional families. At the background is a domestic violence case. There's supportive, you know, supportive friends. It's also about culture and a lot of different things. Now, first of all, what we need to remember is that this movie is based on a real life story, right? So it's inspired by true events, which first of all is horrifying to think that a mother had to go through so much just to get back custody of her children. And she was offered no actual support by the government of Norway. And instead, her children were taken away from her when they saw that she was not able to handle all of these responsibilities that had been thrust upon her. Now, we start off with a seemingly happy family, a husband, a wife and two kids, a son and a daughter. The daughter is four months old, five months old. It seems like at face value, it's a happy family. Everything's completely fine. They're living in Norway. They're living the dream life, the life that everybody dreams of. And then we notice that there are two additional people, two locals sitting with them in their house. And we find out that they're being investigated. So basically they're being observed at how they're raising their children and what the whole situation at home is. And they, they're just, you know, they're very relaxed about it. They're sure that there's nothing wrong and they're going to have a final review and everything will go back to normal. But that does not happen. Now, they're not just there for no reason. There has been, the reason this whole thing started was because the husband beat his wife. And this, a domestic violence complaint was filed against the husband, which is why the government of Norway thought, took it upon themselves to check and to sort of come and observe what's wrong with the family. And so amongst the list of things, a lot of which are cultural, like feeding children with their hands and applying kala tika on the face. But alongside these cultural things are things like that the parents need to go to marriage counseling, the husband does not participate in household chores and a number of other things like this. So they declare the lady an unfit mother, the father an unfit father, but the onus of responsibility is constantly constantly placed on the woman everybody blames her her husband says you know you can't take care of two children and you're useless and the house is dirty etc etc then her mother-in-law is extreme it's terrible it's terribly mean to her and she also is like you know you've got rid of the children and you know you're like this and this and that etc and we see the cracks in the relationship even before we see the cracks in the relationship we don't see we see it in the annoyed looks, in the eye rolls. We see all of these things in the relationship. So it's not, it, they've not created this insane, violent relationship. It's a typical Desi relationship, right? Where the wife is at home, she takes care of the home and the babies and everything related to the kids and the household. And then the husband goes out and earns money. And now with this, you know, it's you, you look at it and you're like, you know, this is a normal household. But you see it through the eyes of the people from the agency and you realize, okay, perhaps it's not the household, you know, it's not the healthiest relationship to be sort of presenting in front of your children. And so it starts this fight where, you know, she's like, I'm going to get the kids back and it's a lot of to and fro and in the right at the beginning they win a court case and they think that you know she's going to be fine but and there are times you're going to be feel mad you're going to be angry at Rani Mukherjee because you know she's so her emotions are all over the place but then again she's a mother and it's easy to 
look at a video and you know you look at the watch the movie and be like you know why is she behaving like this this is so frustrating why will she why would she not listen to anybody but realistically speaking her losing her mind her being extremely emotional at her children being taken away from her a big part of it is the fact that she is four months postpartum now four months postpartum is like your hormones are already all over the place and when your hormones are already all over the place you're obviously going to be extremely full of emotions so there are a lot of court cases and a lot of to and fro where people are like you know she's not fit to be a mother etc etc but my point at this is okay but my point here is that nobody actually fights for her like the first case is one because this gentleman the lawyer is fighting for her it's a government appointed the welfare the agency the government appoints the lawyer for the defense as well because the husband refuses he's like it's too expensive i'm not going to spend money on this which again it shows that the husband just does not care he's just more worried about him more he has he in this whole movie he prioritizes money he prioritizes his citizenship and he prioritizes himself constantly and he constantly taunts his wife he tells her she's a bad mother she's you know a thug and she cannot you know change etc etc but yes for a person to change you know it initially it seems like you know they brought the kids with them to norway but you find out that they got married in india and then they came to norway and they had the kids right there which again means that over that period of time she never assimilated she still does not know the language and knowing the language is such a basic thing but while living abroad a big big factor that exists is the the fact that the men assimilate completely and the women do not which is you know because the women don't leave their houses they're just you know just there right so they're basically there to take care of of the house because if they learn the language if they assimilate they're going to you know learn about their rights they're going to want to be free and that's why a lot of people choose to not let their women have this freedom or you know sort of learn and fit into this space they're living in for years now and so it's a it's it's a lot of different things you know it's layers it, i i often say that movies have layers but this movie does have layers and a lot of these are not like in the face there's like nuance there's like uh, there's, there's a lot of it is okay but there's also the factor that you know yes she's emotional but she is also four months postpartum so her body is completely you know all over the place then the husband is so you you see all of these factors which are involved and then obviously in the background there's also this whole thing the conspiracy with the norway government taking the children and sort of putting them in places adoptive uh, houses and you know the welfare angels the agencies getting money and the people adopting the kids getting money as well so it, it there's also that conspiracy background but i think the family dynamics the power dynamics are what we really really need to observe now the ending i should i spoil the ending <sighs> well the ending is it's a happy ending the ending is a happy ending and you really really feel for her the end, it, it, they've portrayed the ending really beautifully rani mukherjee does an amazing amazing job at portraying the characters she's she's amazing at her job everybody does a really good job but i think what we need to see are you know what we really need to look at are the layers involved in the story and sort of focus on them and watch the movie i 100% recommend and i think after watching this movie we're all just you know after watching this movie i know that we're all going to be hugging our kids a little tighter tonight so take care of yourselves if you liked the movie and if you have something to add to what i sort of came up with So mention it in the comments and I will see you in the next video bye 
you know there's been a lot of outrage about this movie on social media and i saw a lot of people say talking about the co sleeping and the feeding by hand but i feel it was less about the co sleeping and feeding by hand and more about the fact that the husband was violent and abusive mother was depressed because she had to manage everything alone zero participation of the father and of course the son was autistic there were a thousand other things she was four months postpartum and probably depressed as well and overall it was not a conducive environment to raise children but should the children have been taken away from her probably not they should have provided support in whatever way, whatever way was possible now here's the kicker they did recommend marriage counseling and a list of things they could have fulfilled to get the children back but the husband was not willing to help And yes there was a foster system scam running in the background but we cannot close our eyes to the facts that there was a problem in the house